There's also been, both in the US, but primarily in Europe so far, at how to make a detector on the Earth's surface that can go well beyond LIGO. And in Europe, through a study, they've done one that would be deep underground, 10 kilometers instead of, uh, instead of four kilometers, a triangle, which helps you do the uh, polarization, which exists, that it's cryogenic, and that it has two con optical configurations, one that'll work at very low frequencies, and one that would look at work at much higher frequencies. We're not at the end of the road at all. We can develop this technology over the coming years on the Earth's surface to do much better than we're doing now. That's not the end of the story. Just like in astronomy, where the big, one of the big gains in the last decades has been the ability to look at different wavelengths, looking at astronomical th things that happen, but looking at them in the infrared, in the ultraviolet, in the visible, in different wavelengths, has been able to pull together the dynamics. Similar to that, gravitational waves are going to be at different frequencies. We're working at the very highest frequencies, which means we're working where things take milliseconds to happen. Those are very violent things that only take milliseconds. And we've seen one. That's this object coming together. Things that take longer time scales, then if it's minutes or, or hours, we go in space. We can't do that for the reasons that I said on the Earth. We go in space. There's a program to go into space. It's called LISA. Uh, the Europeans are supporting it. It was supported by NASA, but because of budget problems, it was pulled back. We're hoping that it'll be put back into the NASA program, possibly stimulated some by our success. But that's a very important way to get to longer timescales. Mm -hmm.